From the Maricopa Community College campuses to your home, this is Maricopa Now. Here are some of the stories you'll see. Kids are off to college this summer. They're building ratchets, race cars, and a lot more. Adventure awaits study abroad students in Belize. Plus, it's all about the performance of this rock band. And there's so much more on this edition of Maricopa Now. Now from Studio A at Scottsdale Community College, here's your host, Lisa Acrafreda. Welcome to our show. Thank you for joining us. At Kids College, students are learning basic engineering principles using Legos. Deanne Kincaid takes us to this fun and exciting class at Paradise Valley Community College. Take a simple box of Legos and eager to learn kids and you have an elementary engineering class where they can build working machines like this. This kids college class is for 9 to 12 year olds who want to experiment with engineering processes in a fun, hands-on environment. The first day they come in and they build a box that's four Legos high and that is hollow and it cannot break. And the way I test it is I hold it shoulder length and I, they drop, I drop it into a tub and if it breaks, they have to try again. This one passed first try. From this test, they learned that buildings need to be structured so they will not collapse. The second day, we learned about levers, such as scissors and windshield wipers, and that fulcrum has to be in the middle. So, Each day's okay, class well, builds on what was learned the previous today. day. We are going to talk about, um, we're going to do make a rubber band race car, but before we do, we need to talk about some vocabulary words. On the third day, we learn about the wheels and axles, how they go together to make the car go. And then we learn about the gears, how the gears together on the motor turn to make the motor go. So at the beautiful Black Mountain campus of Paradise Valley Community College, the courtyard becomes a test track. Because once you build a race car, you just have to race it. One, two, three, four, five, go. To see what it's doing. So if your things fell apart, you need to go back and modify. So if the car doesn't go very fast and they figure it out, hmm, they're going to have to say, okay, mine doesn't do very well. I need to go back and modify. And that's the whole part of this class is like thinking, changing things. Okay, mine didn't work this time. Maybe I tried this one. So it's back to the drawing board to make improvements so they can race again and see the results of their design changes. One, two, three, go! Yeah! Yeah! We won! Once they've mastered building a race car, the next challenge is to have the entire class work as a team, building an assembly line that will make something. And we have to figure out how it's going to come down that assembly line as a product. So it could be anything. It could be it could be a Twinkie. It could be you know a chair that's in their house, and they have to figure out how to make that from scratch and get it down that assembly line and like out the door as a product that someone would buy. These young engineers have worked hard to learn concepts they'll need in their future careers, but let's hear what they'll take away from the class in their own words. When I grow up, I want to be an engineer just like my dad. This is Tiny But Mighty. Um, she's a little car I built in this engineering class that I signed up for for the summer. Um, I really like it because I want to be a mechanical engineer and I love to build things. I'm having so much fun and making so many friends, I just don't know that I'm actually in a class. We've learned how to build stuff, how motors work, and a bunch of stuff like that. We, we built little uh, cars out of Legos and, um, and in the race we got, me and him got first place in the race. And um, like what I said, we figured that um, little takes less weight, so it'll go faster. And That's the perfect testimony yeah, proving that teamwork, problem solving, and experimentation lead to greater understanding. Kudos to Kids College. For Maricopa Now, this is Deanne Kincaid. In addition to Kids College, Paradise Valley Community College offers a variety of non-credit classes for teens and adults. Contact the Continuing Education Office for more information. Folk tales aren't just for kids, they're for grown-ups too. The Storytelling Institute at South Mountain Community College carries on the tradition of storytelling. And the color green appeared in the trees. And 
then the man in the moon came out and chopped me meat hook off, and I went flying head over heels, and that's how I got here. And that's what you will be, Athena said from this point on. You're probably wondering, what's all this talk about? Get this, a class on how to tell stories. Wow, this is great! I love it! <laughs> Thank you! And I moved around in the island. Now that's excitement. So imagine what it's like to be a part of the action. The class is STO 292, The Art of Storytelling. It's part of the national, renowned storytelling institute at South Mountain Community College. Professionals describe it as... Creative, you know? You get to create something that no one else does. Astounding, innovative. This is one of the most incredible programs that is out there because it's original. It feels something inside of you. It, it really does. It, it does something inside of you. And you get lost in your stories. Well, there I was going head over heels in the air. The Storytelling Institute is cutting edge and gaining momentum by encouraging students to feel comfortable public speaking, respect different cultures, give back to their community, and appreciate the art. I can bring something to my family. I can bring something to school, to my teachers. The story is the word, the word is life, the word is everything, the story is everything. And every class has a textbook, but this one is different. We have now produced the first college level text as an introduction to the art of storytelling for college students. So we're very proud of what we've done. For years, we had to use a textbook that was really geared just for telling to children. But that's not all storytellers do. They tell to people of all ages, and they tell all different kinds of stories. <laughs> this text is effective. Students and storytellers say the oral tradition today has a solid foundation. It outlines important tools. It's practical and hands-on, but at the same time, does not lose sight of the overall vision. And it gives reading and writing a whole new inspiration. One of the things I'm most proud about, there are 35 stories in this book, and 15 of them are appearing for the very first time in this book. And many of them were written by students and storytellers who live right in this area. So it's a textbook that anybody could use anywhere really in the world, but it has a lot of local Arizona flavor, Arizona stories, and Arizona storytellers. But it's more than a textbook. More than a collection of folk tales, myths, personal and fact-based stories, rather a labor of love. Flip the pages and you'll see for yourself the moral to this story. Lisa Aquafreda, Maricopa Now. A full slate of storytelling classes are offered in the fall, including the art of storytelling, multicultural folk tales, and sacred stories from around the world. For more information about the Storytelling Institute, visit southmountaincc.edu. Coming up on Maricopa Now, explore the ancient ruins of Belize. Stay with us. In today's world, layoffs are a fact of life. Stressful? Yes. End of the world? <laughs> no. But with a wife and two kids, I need new skills. Now. Discover yourself at the Maricopa Community Colleges, maricopa.edu. What I look for most in an instructor is someone who is passionate about what they teach. Um, there's nothing better than leaving a class and feeling inspired. Each summer, Chandler Gilbert Community College students explore Mayan ruins visit botanical gardens and snorkel in the world's second largest barrier reef. They also receive college credit while learning about world philosophy and environmental ethics. Greg Delaro takes us to Belize for the study abroad adventure. Excursions to ancient Mayan temples is just one of the extraordinary opportunities students can explore as part of the study abroad program entitled A Bridge to Belize. Part of Central America, Belize once known as British Honduras is a young country with a diverse geography, ethnic groups, and cultures. It's just a great mix for students who are trying to learn biodiversity, cultural diversity, and Belize has all those to offer. This unique study abroad course is designed for community college students 
whose work schedules may not allow them to take off for long periods of time. The way that I put together this uh, particular program is it's uh, roughly a six-week course and in between then they travel so what we try to do is a lot of the educational aspect of the formal knowledge happens prior to going to Belize. Equipped with classroom knowledge students get hands-on experience provided by local guides. I get into Belize I usually step back from the process and let many of the experienced guides explain to our students concepts such as Sunachunich. What do you see, the obvious that you see on, especially the potteries? But if you look at the potteries, they are perfectly rounded and even in thickness. For some students, this is their first experience traveling outside the United States. Personal growth takes many forms. I've lived in the U.S. my whole life, never really moved out of Arizona. And um, so I, I kind of had a one-track mind of this is how the world is. The the biggest transformation that students also write about is the cultural aspect uh, because many of them have not had to deal with people of other cultures and by going to Belize they start to realize uh, certain things. Um, and then traveling to a third world country it definitely um, showed me that people do live differently and it's just not what you see in the textbooks. It's a lot different experience in it firsthand. The way we look at the world can be described simply. Transformation in regards to looking at someone that might not resemble me and realize that they're human and they're smart. And it's really great because I think they bring that back from Belize of how, how to look at other people's ideas and respect them. For Maricopa Now, this is Greg DeLauro. This is the seventh year the Bridge to Belize program has been offered. Get into the game with Inside Maricopa Sports. From the gridiron to track and field, the ninth inning to the winning goal, Inside Maricopa Sports brings you the excitement of Maricopa College's sports. Get up close and personal with athletes and coaches. Plus, meet the unsung heroes of the game. Join us on the field and behind the scenes on Inside Maricopa Sports, only on MCTV, Cox Cable, Channel 115. I'm Cookie, and today we're going to discuss a program called the STOP program. Basically, the acronym for STOP means stop, literally stopping during your day. And then T stands for time. You've got to take some time to get out of your chair, and that's the O, and do something physical. All of us live busy lives. And with the economy the way it is, we're all being asked to do more for less. And so we're spending a lot of time working and sitting. And if you think about it, from the time you get up in the morning till the time you go to bed at night, about 85% of your day is done sitting. So what I want to do is kind of just go over some things that maybe you can do during your day just to add a little bit of activity. Research now is showing that those people that have more active lifestyles actually are healthier. And with the increases in diabetes and obesity and autoimmune diseases, we know that all of the systems of the body require movement for them to actually physically work the ways in which they were designed to do. So just little actions. It doesn't have to be going to the gym for an hour, hour and a half. It can be little bouts of exercise during your day. One of the things that I try to do in my daily job as a wellness coordinator is add a ball into my area, my work area, so that I can actually have a little movement going on while I'm working at my computer. I can also stretch. Another great idea, I think, just to give you an idea of maybe how much you're moving or not moving, is to buy an inexpensive pedometer, put it on, and just track your walking activity for a day and just see where you were. Average walking steps that we'd like to see is about 10,000 steps a day. That's about three miles. For most people, we're at about three to 5,000 steps. I know the first week I put one on, I was only at 3,000 steps. It just was an awareness. So just being aware of how inactive you are during your day can really improve your health. A couple of other things that I would suggest that you do is take little five or 10 minute breaks at your desk and just do some basic stretching or just some mobility exercises. If you can, create a standing workstation, which would be fabulous. We know that we burn like five to eight more calories per hour just standing in our desk. So if you can do that, that's another great way to burn some calories. And actually by standing, we're using muscles that we're not using when we're sitting. So it's a really great way to kind of just keep that activity level going. That's your fit tip for today, and I'm Cookie. 
Get connected with your future by watching Enfoque en tu Futuro. You'll meet remarkable people who make a difference. Find now about curriculum that reaches out across international borders. Enfoque en tu Futuro is about people, places, and a story that have an impact on the Maricopa College District. Tune in to Enfoque en tu Futuro only on MCTV, Cox Cable Channel 115. For times, go to our website at maricopa.edu slash mctv. We're going to do a grilled mahi-mahi with a pineapple jicama salsa. And to start with, we have some raw mahi-mahi, approximately six ounces each. And I'm going to marinate this in a little bit of olive oil and some fresh lime juice. And you want to start this right after you preheat your grill to finish the fish. And in the meantime, I'm going to concentrate on the salsa. This is one of those things that, you, again, you want to let sit for about an hour or so before you eat it. The flavors really develop as the longer it, it, it sits together. We have some fresh pineapple. And I've already taken the top and the bottom off, and I've split it in half. And I've removed all those brown spots that are usually located on a pineapple. Next thing I did was cut it in half, and I'm going to quarter it again. Okay. And this is to remove the core of the pineapple. And we want to cut this a small dice, into a small dice. It's going to come in from the bottom with my knife and cut lengthwise. Now small dice is quarter inch by quarter inch. So I come in with a knife. Remember that the nicer your cuts are, the better it looks on the plate, and the more you impress your guests. Okay, our next task is a minced red onion. And when you clean up an onion, you cut off the ends and you peel it, you'll notice that there's these distinct lines. And that's basically your guideline for how you want to begin this cut. So holding my knife properly, I'm going to follow those lines parallel with a knife. And when I mean say mince, I mean about 1 8 inch. And as I do this, I'm leaving the end connected. I'm not cutting all the way through with my knife. I'm going to turn the knife this direction. And I get a nice fine dice. Next we have jicama. This has already been peeled. And we're going to cut this into a fine julienne, which is what you see right here. One of the easiest ways of doing this, one of the safest ways, is to first cut one of the edges square with your knife. Okay, and that's going to help it keep from rocking back and forth. It's going to be a stable edge. I'm going to take just a nice fine little shaving off of there. I'm going to line these up into layers of two. And then come in with a knife and just do a nice fine julienne. Side. Okay, next is tomato concasse. Now, tomato concasse is a peeled and seeded tomato. So, what we've done here is taken a, a nice ripe plum tomato and took our, our paring knife and just crisscrossed the top and then we removed the core. Once that was done, we dropped it into boiling water only for about 10 to 20 seconds. And you'll notice that the peel will start to release almost immediately in the hot water. Once that's done, we put it into cold ice water to cool it down quickly, and we peeled the tomato. So there's no skin in the salsa. It's this nice, smooth, mellow flavor. And to remove the seeds, just like with the pineapple, I'm going to quarter it. And then take out the inside. And we're going to be doing small dice. There's our tomato. We're going to start by making a vinaigrette with some lime juice, a little bit of olive oil, some salt and pepper, some cilantro, 
and our jalapeno peppers. <clears throat> We're then going to add our jicama, pineapple, tomato, and some onion. Give that a nice light toss. Just let that set, set aside for about an hour while we're cooking our fish. So I have a nice hot grill here. I'm going to season it with an oiled rag. This is going to help prevent the fish from sticking. And then onto the grill. All right, so in order to get the crosshatch pattern on the fish, I laid it on at a 45 degree angle. And that's going to turn it in the opposite direction. So to flip the fish, it's a delicate piece of protein. I always use a spatula as well as tongs flip it over. So we finished grilling off our mahi-mahi and it's time to plate up and today we're serving it with some roasted sweet potatoes as well as some sauteed asparagus. Start by putting the asparagus right in the center of the plate. Sweet potato right below it. And our fish. with our salsa over the top. And there we have it. Grilled mahi-mahi with pineapple jicama salsa. Chef's Menu is brought to you by the Culinary Studies Program at Australia Mountain Community College. For today's recipe, please visit this address. Communication skills and leadership abilities are often at the top of the list for employers searching for that perfect job candidate. Kim Getz met up with a group of Maricopa Community College employees who are improving these skills and their careers. It has been said that most people fear public speaking more than death itself. Everybody has a fear of being judged and being found inadequate in public. And I think that's probably just about universal. Even people that are really, really confident, I think still in the back of their mind have that fear. Mike Trier is one of many Maricopa Community College's employees who have decided to face that fear with the help of Toastmasters. What's great about Toastmasters is you get an opportunity to go ahead and practice those skills in an environment which is very, very welcoming, very supportive. And it's an environment that lets you know it's okay to make mistakes because we've all made those mistakes before in the same situation. Once a week, employees give up their lunch hour, put themselves in the speaking spotlight, and get evaluated by their peers. Today I'd like to help some of our newest members see the big picture in Toastmasters. J.D. Austin is a self-described introvert and database administrator for the district who used to avoid communication altogether. I was really the guy, and you probably met that guy where you work, who goes to work, sits for 10 hours, works on something very technical, and never talks to another human being all day. And this tragic thing is, I really didn't see anything wrong with it. But after six years with Ria Copa Toastmasters, not only is Austin captivating his audiences, he has reached the biggest milestone one can get in this club twice over. He is a distinguished Toastmaster. I've reached that and more than I expected, and but I've now realized how far I can go and there there's really is no end. The, the more I work at it, the better I'll be. And, I think that's true for anybody. While seasoned speakers might set their sights on becoming a distinguished Toastmaster, beginners are just working on getting past those public speaking nerves. I would get nervous. I would find all of a sudden that I needed to take a breath when I should have perhaps taken a breath before I started my presentation. I would get sweaty palms, especially if someone of authority walked into the room. As director of recruitment and retention at Phoenix College, making a good first impression with prospective students and their parents is a big part of Valenzuela's job. I do um, keep in mind all of the time that I am a representative of Phoenix College, and so when I was beginning to feel that there were perhaps weak points that I needed to develop, I was very conscious of that. And in the short time she's been with her local Toastmasters Club, she's noticed a big change. I feel more confident when I speak. I pay more attention to what I'm going to say before I actually say it. I believe that I'm more poised when I present in front of people and uh, can make my point much faster but yet uh, more effectively through my training from Toastmasters. 
Offering something different for everyone, Valenzuela would like to see more Maricopa employees step outside of their comfort zone and give Toastmasters a try. I just think it says a lot about an individual's initiative and their desire to do the best they can for their employer by pursuing something like Toastmasters. For these professionals, fear has turned into fun and the rewards have gone far beyond the applause. Awesome. For Maricopa Now, I'm Kim Getz. Rio Copa Toastmasters is recognized as a president's distinguished legacy club. The club has achieved this highest level of recognition for the past three years. For more information, visit riocopa.org. Taking center stage is just part of the curriculum for a group of students at Scottsdale Community College. As reporter Courtney Karlmark shows us, students don't need a book for this class, but they may need a microphone. Plug in, tune up, and let loose. For a few hours each week, these students get to be in a real rock band, headbanging and all. It's really cool. It's, it lets out a lot of energy, and if you're stressed out that day, just go rock out on stage and you'll feel better by the end of it. Scottsdale Community College student Austin Harrington digs a rock band so much, he's been rocking out since it started. When I came into this program, I, I loved rock and roll and the blues and that kind of thing, but I hadn't played, you know, modern pop music and that kind of thing. So getting to do that over the course of the last few semesters has really changed me as a musician. For SCC student Don Marie Davis, being the only girl in class can be a little intimidating, but that hasn't stopped her from taking her music career up an octave. Well, I've always been a singer and I've always been a performer, but I've never really performed rock and roll outside of my car. I'm working out a cowbell click track. Instructor Scotty Pearson acts as the band's producer and manager. He takes a group of students from different backgrounds and by the end of the semester, molds them into musicians good enough for a real gig. Our first band tonight, Hand Apocalypse. One of the biggest things to try to get people to realize is that when you're a musician, you really do embody that music and you don't necessarily think about it. Learning the words and knowing the song is important, but Scotty tries to teach the students that whether they're playing in front of a huge audience or a huge empty room, it's all about the performance. One of the things I like to say is that people hear with their eyes, not necessarily their ears. So if a band is going crazy on stage and it sounds okay, if they look good on stage, people are gonna be blown away by that band. It's a lesson that takes some getting used to. For rock and roll, you have to be yourself and really like let go and let your own emotions out. It's just a lot going on in your head at once. Like if you don't know the song, that's all you're thinking about, but at the same time you've got you know, 30 or 100 or 1,000 people that are watching you. And as the saying goes, practice makes perfect. And if you can even win over Grandpa, well now you're really rocking. I thought it was really cool. I've never seen, well, my grandson perform, and it was really kind of mesmerizing to, you know, know that he could do that. He was like, like like a little rock star, kind of. <laughs> For Austin, performing live produces a feeling like no other, and a final exam he'll never forget. It's a rush. It's, it's terrifying. Um, absolutely terrifying. A rush that keeps the mic in his hands and the music in his heart. Reporting for Maricopa Now, I'm Courtney Karlmark. And that's our show. I hope you've enjoyed it. Be sure to stay tuned to MCTV for a great lineup of shows, including Inside Maricopa Sports and 180 View. Also, check out our website at maricopa.edu slash mctv and click on DestTube. DestTube allows you to watch this show and all of our regularly produced programs anytime you wish. Until next time, take care. Don't touch that remote. MCTV has more great programming coming right up. Join MCTV every day for Inside Maricopa Sports in Foke and Tufaturo and our daily community calendar update in the district. <laughs>